Welcome, welcome, y'all. We going live here in a second. We go, I got my guy, Tom, coming in for Canada. There he go right there. There he go. Let me get Tom in here. And uh, we're going to talk about the resilience tour that's going on. Uh, we're going to talk about some motivation. Some midday motivation, guys, from the refresher. And uh, my good friend, Tom, from Canada. So, ah, we're both on. There we go. Yay, hey, there we go. Awesome. How are you, brother? Uh, doing well, my man. How you doing, brother? Good. Get some light on this situation. Let me just plug things in here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good, man. We got six viewers so far, man. So, how are you? Uh, yeah, I see you're uh, designing some stuff today in the studio. Ah, yeah, I'm in a lab right now doing some designs. Good job, man. Good job. So, um, yeah, give me uh, what 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 do you uh, break that down for us? What do you want to? Uh, as far as designing, what do you, is this for your clothing? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. It's for my clothing brand, trying to be ready for, uh, this upcoming show, but this ain't about me, man. This is about you, Tom, man. So tell, tell us about this resilience tour that's going on right now, man. All this phenomenal thing that you got going on. Cause I got G in the building from the UK and I would love G to also be a part of that tour too, man. So tell us more about it, brother. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to, yeah, be able to be starting to put this together. It started when I was out on Clubhouse. You know, I was just meeting uh, people, sharing my story, and then hearing other people's stories like your own. And uh, there's just so many amazing stories of people who have overcome huge obstacles, almost impossible obstacles in their life, and are achieving success today. And so, you know, this is my book, Orphan 32. Uh, my children's book here and just telling the story of coming to Canada as a wharf and, and, and being, finding out, you know, 32 years later, it was a mistake that I even got, came here, that I was taken by mistake, that I was actually, you know, I was never abandoned by my, my, my parents. I was never put up to, for adoption. So I, I should, by all intents and purposes, still be with my family in Vietnam, but, you know, by God's hand, I was brought here. But, um, you know, it's, it's just, Things happen in the tragedy and the trauma that occurs, but then you have to move on. You have to, what I call friction traction, you have to use that friction in your life to move you forward, right? If you don't have friction, if you don't overcome that friction, you just are spinning your wheels. And so that's what I'm training and teaching and coaching people is to use that friction, to use that trial, use that tribulation, and don't just play the victim card but to move forward, learn from it, experience, and then help others like you are, which is awesome. And so what we've set up is the Resilient Summit and Tour that's going to be on Clubhouse. I don't know how many days now because I have so many speakers that, you know, uh, want to be a part of this. Like we're up to maybe 50, 60 speakers already, you know. And so how do you fit that many people? We don't want to be going 24-7, right? So um, most of them in, in America, we do have some from overseas that would be hopping on here as well. So we're still trying to figure out how to kind of do the clubhouse part of it. But then eventually we want to actually start doing this on tour. You know, I'm speaking with people like yourself, a friend of mine, Cornell, down in Florida, who was in, incarcerated for 16 years for a crime he didn't commit. He was set up totally. He, uh, you know, recovered from that. And then he also um, died, literally died. He was dead for 16 minutes in the church service and recovered and came back to life. And so this man has like so many stories to, to share, but there's people like this all over. You know, my friend Marv who escaped from, I think it's Columbia with his family to come up here for safety. And just, you know, people who, you know, could have the right to play the victim card for all intents and purposes, but choose not to. But they're not just, you know, achieving success for themselves so they can buy the car so they can you know you know have the boat or the plane or whatever it is they actually want to um they will actually want to uh do well for others they actually want to collaborate you know there's a saying that says if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go take people with you and that's what I want to do. I want to take all of these people. Like I've had the opportunity of this book being, I'm writing my book, right, a second, a third book right now. I've had this book featured on, 
you know, CBC and Toronto Star and all of the big media. Not everybody has that opportunity or leverage to be able to do that. But now I can, you know what I mean? Because I've been there. I can now help other people do that. Get the media response. Get the public response they're looking for. And I think, they, you know, they need to have because their stories are so amazing. So people like yourself, again, Cornell, people like this who, you know, maybe they get their story told regionally, but they never really get told on a global stage. And that's what I want to be able to do is, you know, Clubhouse has people from all around the world. And so, you know, if we want to start this this live tour, it's going to be very much like the, the style or the model of TEDx. You know, eventually I want to take over TEDx. That big, you know, people are wanting stories of resiliency. People want to know if they did it, I can do it too. They want to hear these inspirational stories of, of hope and victory and success. And just like people who are, you know, everyday people like yourself, you know what I mean? And it's not to put ourselves down where we're working in nine to five jobs or anything like that. That's just what we do to survive and to make, you know I mean, make a living. But there are people with amazing stories that just by telling their story can help someone else, you know, maybe survive another day. Maybe just take that step to do a business that they've always been wanting to do. Maybe it is to repair that relationship that they never thought could be repaired. You know what I mean? And so hopefully this this resilient summit tour will be a tool that people will take and then eventually catch on with more people, right? That they'll apply to, to be and stand on the resilient stage and tell their stories of resiliency. So we're coming up with a brand it's just the word resilient, right? But it's going to look somewhat like the TEDx kind of brand. So it's very simple. And, th and then whenever uh, someone's speaking on the resilience stage, whether it's virtual or whether it's in person, we'll have that brand moniker in behind. So, you know, if there is anyone who's listening to this now and live or later on and you have a story, you feel you have a story to share, where you've kind of overcome, you started out life maybe behind the eight ball, and now you've go overcome that, and now you are starting to achieve success, or you have achieved great success, we want to hear from you. And one of the things that has come out of this is from my friend Marv and I, we're starting a magazine, and it's called Resilience Magazine. And so we're going to be telling stories of people who have come, immigrated to a different country, had to start over maybe $10 in their pocket, you know, $20 in their pocket and have built themselves up to, you know what I mean, wherever they are today. And I hear stories and stories of, here of that because of when I share my story, people feel the freedom to share their stories. So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. As we roll this out, you know, your name's gonna be up there in light. Cornell's name's gonna be up there in light. Marv's name is gonna be up there in light. Every time we feature a speaker, right, and their story. We're going to be telling the whole story. We're going, to, we're going to be telling the dirt, you know, the dark and dirty start, you know what I mean? Because the more people can relate with it and the more people who can relate with it, the more impact you're going to have, right? So it's not, you know, people who kind of, you know, I had, my, my, my dad was a millionaire and I started five companies. Who can relate to that? You know what I mean? But I was on the street you know what I mean? I worked my job as a waiter or a waitress, and I worked my way up doing this. You know what I mean? I was a single parent. You know what I mean, how many more people can actually relate to that, and you can be inspired by that? So, yeah, your thoughts? Now, I like that, man. That's that's a great idea, man, because I allow people to really tell them stories because, you know, we live in a day and age where people are very judgmental. You know, they see somebody who's very successful and say, hey, that person is stuck up or that person's a snob but really don't know what that person been through to get to where he got there you know yeah so you know exactly. that that tour is so perfect because it allows others to go back and tell their story or how they turn their tragedy into triumph what well, you put it what you make your tragedy into triumph yeah. but you also say you make your mm, you mess your message oh yeah 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 yeah. you turn your mess into your message and your test and your testimony yeah yeah Exactly, man. And so all of that, you know what I mean? We're going to be putting into the whole resilient brand, you know what I mean? And you are one of the big inspirations for this, brother. So I just want you to know that. So, you know, as a co-founder of this and with Marv and uh, my man Cornell, you know what I mean? 
what's exciting is print is not dead. So many people say print is not is dead. You know, with the onset of ebooks and digital and stuff like that, not true. You know, so many people say, no, I don't want an ebook. I want to actually hold your story. And so, as a publisher, hope for the world productions. You know, what I mean. Um, I want to see so many books being printed. I want people to be holding in their hands. I want people's library. I have a whole shelf of books of people of my friends who've written their stories out. You know, I just published and I helped write a book for a doctor in Hamilton, Dr. Anna Hope. Now her book is only going to friends and family, but you know, what I mean, it's a legacy. This is a legacy. If you can get your book in print and on, you know, digital book, that's leaving a legacy. And I write that right in the very front of my book to my kids, right here. Let me just see here. I say, for my children, Aaron, Matthew, Joshua, and Rachel, this is my legacy I leave for you. You are my legacy I leave to the world, right? Right in the very front page of my book, I leave that. You know what I mean? What is the legacy that you are leaving in the world. And I say to people, you hold the pen. You determine your, your ending. You get to determine your ending. So you hold the pen. So what is it going to be? Make the rest of your life the best of your life. Exactly. How, how are you doing that, right? And so, yes, you're slogging through every day. Maybe you're nine to five and you say you drive for FedEx. You know what I mean? You're driving through the snow. You're driving through the sleet. You're driving through crappy conditions, but you're holding on to that dream. And at the same time, even while you're driving, you're inspiring people. You're going live. You're talking to people on your, you know, Instagram. Awesome, right? Because you're not just saying, poor me, poor me, poor me. You know what I mean? You're saying, this sucks, but it's going to get better, right? The sun's going to shine again. Exactly. Yeah. You know, someone says, you know, oh, every, everything takes a rest. You know what I mean? The sun goes down and the sun and then the moon comes up. That's not true. The sun is always shining somewhere, right? I was uh, flying into Ottawa, snowstorm. It was horrible. And then we flew out and I missed, I missed three flights because of cancellations, Right. So like they kept on canceling and canceling and canceling. I just sat in my seat in the airport saying, there is going to be a flight that goes out. So finally, we got a flight out. So we're taking off and, and it was snowy. Like it was bad. We took off, we got through the clouds and then boom, the sun was right there. As soon as we broke through the clouds, the sun was there, right? The sun is always shining. It ever goes down and never said it just seems like that because of horizons right but it's perspective if your perspective is the sun is always shining the sun will always shine yeah. right you always think it's paradise it will be paradise right and so you know i look out there it's a winter wonderland it's still paradise because i see it as paradise and so it's your mindset it's how you perceive you know what i mean and if you can perceive you can achieve and you're doing that brother you're doing that you're setting that vision for for people and you're setting a very inspirational brand for yourself which is awesome you know what i mean uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so yeah if there is anyone who wants to connect and wants to tell their story please connect with me you can follow me on instagram uh, Tom Gamble 32 you can message me directly you can find me on Facebook you can, but just let me know when you are trying to contact me what I've had a lot of people you know I mean I have thousands of people on Facebook they don't tell me where they met me right they you have to put some contacts or I just totally think you're a troll or a robot you know what I mean so just say hey we met on or I got connected with you on uh, you know what I mean Sean Jackson's Instagram or whatever it was let me no, so then I can add you. I feel safe adding you to my my followers. Yeah. Uh, thank you, brother. And yeah, as far as driving in the snow, uh, that's definitely mentally challenging, man. I love doing it. It's just because um, your mind tells you not to do it because it's it makes you uncomfortable, you know. So if you're able to go out there and and do it, like for me, doing that and conquering that, um, yeah, it's scary. Yeah. But at the same time. By you getting home after it, you feel so much better. Cause you'd be like, "Wow, I, I just did that!" Like you conquered that, right? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. So, why don't we take some time? I don't know if we can do this. If you can do this, let me know. Um, let me know if there's anyone who wants to answer or ask a question. Definitely, let's do that. 
I think you can add a few people onto a onto a a feed. So see if you can do that. I'm just gonna close my video for a quick quick set of, if, if I can. Yeah, I think we got I think we got Ron here who wants to come up and ask the question. Yep, let's do it. And then step away from one second. All right. There he is, the man himself. From you What's going on, brother? This man is amazing. He runs the Ron Lilly Foundation in Uganda. He's helping a lot of kids, a lot of young people. Um, he runs the foundation. So what he's doing is he's collecting funds and then distributing it to the places in Uganda. Uh, no, no, you, 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 you can come now. You can come now. We can hear you. It's it's breaking up. Yeah, you know, it's night here. Network has disturbed a little bit. Okay. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, you know, your story and how you got started. I can't hear you, son. Uh, Can you hear me now? He said, so "I want to text him and just." You can hear us now, brother. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, "So tell us about yourself and uh, you know what you got going on and uh, stuff like that, brother. About your project." Oh well, thank you, brother. Um, I'm Bichekwa Ronald. You can call me Ronnie for simplicity. The foundation called the Ron Lilly Foundation, and uh, that takes care of 68 families right now with over 270 vulnerable children. And most of these children fall in two, two specific categories. Most, the other first category, they are among the neglected children. Then others are orphans. And uh, these neglected children are children that we identify from families where the young mothers have left to them because most what happens here when a girl does not have access to education they resort to marriage and because the boys that are taking them are not responsible enough to take care of them what they do they end up divorcing after getting pregnant and what they do now they leave the children with their grandmothers because they can't now go to their real parents because they are too tough. They can't bear with that. So these children are left with their grandmothers who are too old, who can't even get any other job coming to, to in, in position to support these young children. So they end up living in the total poverty. They end up they end up growing in a situation where they are trapped in the poverty that they never participated into. And right and what we do as Ronald Foundation, we identify these families and so far we have six to eighty families. That's that's phenomenal right there, brother. Isn't that phenomenal? So he's doing great work. One person, you know what I mean, and he has a background himself. You know what I mean? That he came from that was very rough. And then being able to now, as I say, friction traction, take that experience. And now he's not just trying to build his own kingdom, but taking that and helping others. Right? I've got a I've got another man uh in Uganda, uh Pastor Vincent from the uh, Happy Hours Orthodox Foundation Orphanage, and he does the same thing. He was orphaned at a very young age, and you know what I mean? He's turning lemons into lemonade. 
and he's giving them a life, but he's giving them a livelihood as well. And so this is what I want to see happen is people inspiring to be able to do things that will maybe not only um, help themselves and help maybe the people around them, but like help globally. And so, you know, you know, if we can create some kind of foundation or, or micro credit loan system where young people from all over the world have access to funds to create small businesses, like you're an entrepreneur, right? And you mentor them as an entrepreneur yourself. You mentor these young people so that they're building their own economy in their village, right? And, you know, online now, you know what I mean? It levels the playing field that you could be in the middle of West Africa and you could have an online store and it could be people could be paying you just for, you know, selling someone product over here and they ship it over here and they're just the middleman. You know what I mean? It, it, it's now accessible for anyone to be able to make money online and be able right. to, you know, they don't have to necessarily have to make the product. They don't necessarily have to buy the supplies to create a, a piece of jewelry or something to sell. They can have someone who sells it, you know, like affiliate programs or, or something, or maybe they are an artisan and they do want to sell their own work on online. You know I mean? Being able to help them set up a shop or something like that. So if there is anyone online who, you know, is capable and is, is good at that, those kind of things, you know, be sure to connect with us because we want to make sure that the resilient tour isn't just to build the resilient tour and make money and, and, and all of that. We want to be able to fund and give back and make a win, 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 win situation, right? We just want to have so many wins come out of this um, that, uh, yeah, if we can help even um, kickstart or launch someone like yourself through the resilient tour. You know what I mean? How awesome is that? So. Well, I think that's phenomenal right that time, man. You're definitely a great person, bro. What you're doing, man. I, I definitely got a lot of respect for you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's when you get to a point where it's like time to give back. It's time to um, say, okay, I've, I've done well. You know what I mean? Now it's time to help others. And we all, it's, there's a saying, a rising tide floats all boats. Right, so it's being able to say, "Hey, let's let's everybody catch the wave. Let's it's everybody's turn to win." And right now, with COVID, what's going on? You know, with school shutting down and all, the, people are getting frustrated. People are kind of facing another wall. They're they're getting exasperated. They're saying, "Not again," right? And if we can just open that door a crack or the window a crack, and just allow hope to just just gleam in and say, "The sun is shining," right? Let's let's just let's let's just warm up to the glow of the sun. You know what I mean? And let's let's help each other. Let's help you know, give each other a hand up rather than a hand out. Because handouts don't last, but hand up will be there forever. And so, is there anyone else who might have a question? Is they may want to raise their hand? Uh, I, I think that's it for raising the hand right there. I don't see nobody else raising their hand. We got a lot of love though. Oh. LJ Windecker is a friend of mine from Hamilton. Who else? Who do you know on the online? I'm just looking through the list of who's here. Uh, we got Yana in the building. She, she I know her. She's uh, part of Evolution. Bianca's part of Evolution. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So uh, definitely, time. Look, you want to tap into my room today, too? I'm actually doing a room. It's going to be a great topic. I need everybody who's viewing to tap in on that room. Is, uh, I think the topic was um, what can you – what um, – what can we do better in a hospital? What can we build better? Or how can we build a better hospital? Um, I got to go recheck the topic, but um, I know I made that topic this up. Gonna on, this is going to be on Clubhouse? Yeah. Okay, what time? Probably 1, one fifteen, one thirty. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, let me know. Ping me in to the room if I'm available, if I'm not at lunch. Um, and then we can, I can jump in and, and you know what I mean, uh, do my share, but I wish you the best. Um, and even if you ping me in, I can jump on and I can start pinging other people. In yeah. Well, right. So, um, I was asked though, just the uh, last minute, uh, I was asked someone who else is running a summit from the speakers and coaches society. Um, if I knew any other influencers who are interested in sharing their story. So I'm going to be putting your name forward. But if there's anyone else who is interested in getting on podcasts 
anybody who wants to um, do their own online courses or anything like that. Um, my friend is looking for speakers. And so she's going to be coming out and a lot on health. So that's why I was thinking of you because I know you work out very much about having a healthy body, soul and spirit. Um, so, you know, I mean, if there is anyone else in that whole world of holistic health and, you know, I mean, um, then contact with me and I'll refer you to, to my contact who's hosting the summit. But again, thanks for bringing me on, talking about the Resilient Summit and Tour. I'm really looking forward to rolling this out. It will probably be a five-day summit on Clubhouse at first, and then we'll be moving it into figuring out the logistics. Because right now, with COVID-19, travel, all that kind of stuff, everything's kind of just on hold. But until then, um, doesn't mean that these stories can't be shared. And then what we're going to be doing probably halfway through is hopefully launching the uh, e-magazine, Resilient Magazine. And so... Well if you need help with the magazine, man, um, I got a guy who's online right now. Um, he's a great friend of mine, uh, John Blassingame. He's in the magazine world, and let um, see if I can bring him up. And um, I know for sure he'll be willing to really help out in that, in that sense, you know. So he does um, work with Hype Magazine, Fever Magazine, so many other magazines, man. So uh, that's who I'm really working for right now as well. I'm his PR. We do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of flyers for him. You know, we got a fashion show coming up January 15th. I told you about that. Where is so, that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's who's uh, doing it with me. I brought him up, so hopefully he'll come up. Where are you, gonna, where are you doing your fashion show? Ah, there he is. There There's there. the man. Tom, there he is. Tom. Hello, Tom, hello, Tom, hello. Tom. hello. Tom. <laughs> How are you? Salute How to you. you. Doing, hello, everyone. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, you too, sir. I, I brought you up because he mentioned something about a, uh, he mentioned about the magazine, and I was like, "Okay, hey, I know the perfect guy for that." <laughs> uh -huh. That's yeah. awesome. What uh, what type of magazine are you uh, launching? So we're doing more of a stories magazine about people's stories of called Resilient Magazine, and uh -huh. we're looking at like a lifestyle magazine. general lifestyle general lifestyle publication. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's the what's your frequent? Uh, well, we don't know what the frequency would be right now, right? Right now, we're probably gonna be looking at quarterly. All right, four times a year. Yeah. Okay. How many pages? Um, we're probably you know I mean with the amount of stories that are out there, we're probably looking at about 150. 150 pages. So uh, uh, that that would be 146 plus four the covers. Right. Uh huh. All right. Are you going? Are you going? To, so that would have to be perfect bound. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's uh -huh. what has told me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a good printer. We're going to start at, at a, with an e magazine, first of all. Yeah. Right. And uh -huh. then we'll move to print. And yes, yeah, so I have a printer that prints my books. Oh, okay. So here in Canada, but I'm always willing to talk to people who are specifically in the magazine world. Uh huh. Because right. Are you looking to go into the retailers such as Barnes and Nobles or Books right. a Million, Books a Million, Bar um, you know, Walmart? Exactly. Target. Yeah, we want more of the chapters, Indigo, that kind of place. You know what I mean? Well, cha uh, chapters, Indigo is up in Canada. That's right. That's right. the Canadian. That's the Canadian. Uh, 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 like like a CVS or yeah. or, so or or Books a Million or Barnes and Nobles. I meant Books a Million and Barnes and Nobles. That's the version, the Canadian version. Right, right. I mm -hmm. want to be Success Magazine or Rob Report or, you know, magazines like that. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, you got a, a lot of pages, and 146 plus four is a lot of pages. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. so is that's... it eight, eight and a half by, by 11 or? Yes. Okay. So yeah. regular magazine format. Yes, that's correct. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. It, a lot of it would be uh, advertising, you know what I mean, as well. Like, mm -hmm. uh, But, you know, we want to make sure that there's a good amount of stories throughout it as well, right? Uh, it's not just all advertising, right? Mm -hmm. People can but do you have, oh, well, you know, the, the, a good, like 150 pages, 30% of that should be advertising. That's normally what the, you know. Let me give you an example here. Mm-hmm. 
Good to see you, Doc. Doc, I, I saw you. I said, I got to say hey. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah. How you doing? Everything okay? Yeah, I took the day off, man. Just working on some stuff right now. Doing I hear you. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. So this is a friend of mine. He does this magazine, Autostrada. Now, his, you're right. His is only 70, but I think he's grown it to about 80. 80, so that's... Uh, you know 70, I mean? 76 plus four. Yeah. Is he, it, but is he saddle stitch? No, no, no. That's perfect. He's perfect bound. Yeah. What's the paperweight? 100 cover? I don't know what it is, but it's a beautiful glossy. Oh, the, it, it gloss. It's not UV. It's gloss. It's pretty high. Yeah, it's pretty glossy. Okay, that is it. Let me see. Hold it. I can, I can tell UV. See, the glo see glossy is... Um, uh, it, the, it has a nice gloss, so UV is really shiny. Oh, okay, maybe it's UV. I can mm -hmm. ask. I mean, it's, yeah, you can see okay. it. So this is a friend of mine from Burlington who put this out, and his, uh -huh. his books are right up there on chapters, right beside Rob Report and stuff like well, that. Well, yeah, well, you brought, yeah, because that you know, there's a lot of um, interest in auto type auto uh, titles right now. Yeah, on yeah. the newsstand. But even lifestyle is big now too. You know? Oh, without a doubt, you know. That's, but I'm thinking, you know, we want to take stories, like we say, of people who start at the bottom. You know what I mean? Behind. And work their way. And uh, have, and, uh, exactly, positive, and, and other inspirational stories. That's right, you know what I mean? Inspirational, they, positive, uh, yeah. Possible, right? Mm -hmm. oh, and, uh, you know, I know Sean's got that story. You know oh, I mean? without a doubt. My friend Cornell has Without that. a doubt. He's the man right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, I appreciate that, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Opportunity to get him to, you know what I mean, the next the next levels and, mm -hmm. get the, uh, you know, um, exposure. It, it's exactly, exactly. Well, a lot of, you know, you know with the, what's going on today, that's what a lot of folks need, that exposure and, you know, letting folks, you know, when, whenever there's a negative story, you know, I, you know, unfortunately, they cover that before they cover the positive sides of things that are happening in life. Well, okay. and talking about, you know, who people can't relate to people who, you know, start as millionaires and just make more money, but more people can relate to people who start at the bottom. And work their way. You know what I mean? They're on their way there. They're mm -hmm. like, what I can do. It. Right? If he started that far behind, you know what I mean? I'm only here. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? What's my excuse, kind of? Right, exactly. Okay. You, know, you know, how do we, how do I, how do, let, let me, let me uh, look at the, the uh, what, what he did to take his life to the next level. That's you right. know? Yeah, that's right. right. And yeah. one of his stories, not only of people like Sean, who are, you know, going that direction, but now helping other people, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're building community. They're building uh, you know, they're they're bringing their peeps with them. They're they're wanting to not just do it for themselves, but he wants to build this hospital for people with sickle cell. Like that's that's mm -hmm. an amazing cause, right? Well, you know, and and in this with this publication, and I just talked to some folks that uh, that deals with whole food. You know, the uh, the people who distribute food to, uh, into whole food, and of course. But this publication, let me say that it's an inspirational publication that, you know, which is, again, for Whole Food. And guess where else it could go into? It could be an inspiration. We have close to 20,000 prisons, 24,000 to be exact, prisons in the U.S. Okay? This could be an inspiration for some of those prisoners Okay, and we I got the contact to get it into the prison system. Amazing, amazing. You know what I mean? And this is the thing, like the guy I was talking about earlier, Cornell um, uh, Bunting, he mm. was incarcerated 16 years mm. for a crime he didn't commit. Wow. <laughs> it's bad enough, 16, but then I didn't do the crime. <laughs> oh, he'd be a bitter. <laughs> He's not. He's so inspirational. He's so giving. He's so joyful, right? And he he has every right to be bitter and to you know, yes. oh, yeah. but he but, does. But, he yeah, but, great success, right? Yeah. 
Man, it, 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 if you're bitter, you're not going anywhere. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. You got to learn how to accept what is, but it, but move on from that point. Well, and as I say, there and be you know let it. How do I say? Take over your your life. Okay. You have to be able to. Okay. This happened, but I can still move forward. As long as I have life, I have hope. Amen. God is, you know, that's the, you have to have that type of attitude in order to move forward in this life today. Absolutely. If you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to have a bad day, what kind of day are you going to have? A bad day. If you wake up in the morning and say, hey, I feel great. God has given me this day. Now it's up to me to make it happen. And you feel motivated. Okay. That's going to take you to another direction forward. Okay. I, I have a, a place I go into every morning, a uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. There's seven or eight guys in there, but, and there's people that'll come in and I say, Hey, how are you? How's your day? And people, some people are surprised. Oh, you know, but you know what? It wait. It gives them that that positive attitude. That's right. Okay, and that's what we need today more than ever. Well, and it's someone who actually cares how their day is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Someone cares enough to ask you. Yeah. How your day is? You know. There was this young lady that come in there every morning, and uh, you know she came in there once the first time, and she had a frown on her face. Okay, and I said, "Hey, how are you this morning?" And she was shocked, but then she said, "I'm fine." Now every day, when she comes into Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> what she looks for, you know, because that takes them through that day. That's awesome. Uh huh. That's fantastic. Life lesson right here on Up Stylish. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got to take something from the day rather than go through the day. Through the day. Exactly. <laughs> when I'm speaking on stages, you know, I tell people we have a dash. You know what I mean? We have, a, we have our birth date and we have our expiry date. Oh, yeah. Two dates, we have a dash or a line. Mm -hmm. and that you have a beat in your heart and breath in your lungs you commit that day to being something awesome and amazing but then i challenge people i say i hope you commit that day to make it awesome and amazing for someone else be, oh. be intentional with how are you going to make the day better for someone else and it might be as simple as a how are you or you know what i mean my that looks good on you or you oh, look oh i love your dress i love your shoes i love uh, you know yeah. people you know, it motivates people. Wow. You know, you know. Even better, man. Something about, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. It goes a long way. Hey. Long way. Yes, it yes it does. That's awesome. Yes, it does. It definitely does. John, we tell me. What, what part of the magazine do you get involved with? Just the printing or do you do the layout? Uh, no, no. What I do, I'm in, I'm in circulation, distribution. Okay. I get you into Barnes and Nobles. I would get you into Books a Million. I would get you into Walmarts, Targets. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I have the connections. Well, I've been in the industry 43 years. Fantastic. So, you know, I know everybody. Right. <laughs> he do right. too. He do too. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you for making that connection. We'll mm -hmm. definitely be in touch. And uh -huh. then looking for people in the kind of the editing and the formatting of that. But once we have a product. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you have a graphic person already? That's what we're looking for. Oh, I have someone that does that. So I can put you in touch with them. That's awesome. I'm That's sure I'll give you the information and you can give it to the gentleman. Uh, okay, maybe. definitely. And what was the percentage of advertising to pages? 30%. 30%, 30%. Yeah. The pages need to be of that. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Yeah, 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 that's that's how that is, and what have you, you know, because you know you got to have certain percentage of advertising, yes. and, and depend on your uh, distribution to pay for the magazine. You advertising is going to be your 
your dollars. The, the, the magazine paid for and profit. Right, right. Is that the same for digital? Uh, no, no. Digital is another animal that's, you know, online. And you got to, you charge them. And you can print on demand on digital. Right, right. But like a, an e-magazine. Yes, it, that's print on demand. Yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. How much advertising do you need to have versus... Well, on on an e magazine, you know, you 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 don't have to worry about printing because they only you only no. print on demand. Right. Okay. So, I mean, you know, advertising is important, but it's not as as important as. That's the, okay, that's what I thought. Print, print media. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, this has been enlightening. This has been great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's things like this. You know, someone was saying, you know, you change your story by telling your story. Mm hmm. So mm -hmm. just keep on telling your story and you never know who's going to pop but up. But you never know who's listening. Exactly. Exactly. And as Ron said the best, once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. That, exactly. You know, you, it, 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 that's why you always have to be positive. And then whenever you're doing your direction, because you never know who's listening. That's and right. Hey, that gentleman, I enjoyed what he was saying. Maybe I ought to contact him. Or if you, you're talking negative, they say, hey, let me back away. I was interested in talking to this guy, but after listening to him, <laughs> that, that's okay. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah. 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 You have a choice. People need to know that. They have a choice. You, have you definitely, choice. every day when you wake up, the choice is to live or to exist. Hey, John, we got some viewers in the building. We got Amelia Couture in the building. She's a fashion brand. She wrote me a few days ago about going to the fashion show. I've just been mad busy. I've been, like, being right back. But if you could, while you're on right now, John, for time as well, too, who's listening, tell us a little bit more about the fashion show, what's going on, who's going to be in the building, who we got in the building, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. What was yours, sir? Right. Well, let me just say this. First of all, you know, the show, uh, we have it here geared for – Martin Luther King's birthday weekend. That's January 15th. Uh, we have the people from the fashion, film, and music industry that'll be in the house for the models and the designers and the makeup people and the hair people to network with. As you know, your network is your net worth. It's, uh, all right, surround yourself with positive people and you'll get positive results. And that's what we try to do when we invite these models, these designers, and young folks that are trying to take their career to the next level, but does not have a vehicle to get them to touch base with folks that can do anything to help them out. So we bring those folks there to the uh, Marriott, to the meeting, and they network with these people. We've been doing that for 43 years. Amazing. Yeah. And what kind of best stories do you have from that? Uh, oh, we have one, Deborah Shore. If you Google Deborah Shore, you will see who she is. She was, in 1989, she won my show, and we sent her to Paris. That, that's one of the prizes for the people who, it's a contest, and that's the prize, one of the prizes for the people who win is a trip to Paris, London, or Rome and a fashion spread in one of the magazines that I work with. Amazing. And uh, so she won the show. She's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay. She would have never got to Paris other than winning my show. That's amazing. Deborah is 6'2". Okay. If you Google her, you'll see her height, her, her structure, and etc. She went to Paris and she's never returned home. She was, she's modeled for Valentino. She's been on the French Vogue, the French Cosmopolitan. She does the uh, Paris fashion show, uh, tour shows, and she does the New York fashion shows. So that is one of the most successful stories. Awesome. And we have people in the music industry that in the fashion, I've worked with a gentleman um, uh, Mr. Bernard Bronner with Upscale Magazine. I helped him get started. 
Sheen magazine. Um, you know, I worked with a gentleman that was in the movie industry, and uh, he was uh, supposed to be doing the uh, the uh, the Grammys this year. But I understand they might be postponing the Grammys. Yeah. Okay. And and um, his, you know, his name is uh, Mr. Will Packer. Will did the movie Stomp the Yard, the movie Straight Out of Compton, gotcha. the movie Think Like a Man. Okay. And he started out, graduated from FAMU, came to Atlanta, you know, uh, just um, uh, broke as he can be. We, uh, we, uh, Mr. Barner helped him out, supported him, got his first movie. And from that first movie, uh, he went on to be one of the top producers in the industry right now. For, all right? And uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of successful stories with people. As I said, unfortunately, we don't give that those success stories that are positive that are people who are working in, in their community that are doing positive things, they never get that opportunity to be noticed. And that's what we want. Uh -huh. That it, well, we need that. We definitely, especially today, we need that because all that's going on, yeah. you know, we need to, to say, hey, there's some goodness on, on this earth. There are people that are doing great things and uh, and challenging people to do great things. Yeah, where you know why don't we cover that? You don't want to don't you know, I don't want to hear every day uh, twelve people got shot. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the women that got molested. You know, well, all the, the negative things you hear. Well, but go down. The more we put good out, we'll see those stories. Exactly. The more positive we can make it, the more suppressed that we can get rid of the negativity. That's right. And that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take life to another level. I'm working with four people from Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they, they could choose to live that lifestyle, but they choose not to. They, they choose to work three jobs. They choose to get their businesses going and off the ground so that they can give back to their community so they can be positive role models, right? Mm -hmm. Not taking the easy road. They're, they're working hard. They're, they're you're investing the sweat equity, but it's well, you know what, you know what, what you put into life, you get out. If you put nothing in, nothing comes out. Nothing you work. comes out. That's work. You gotta work. You gotta put things in in order to make it happen. Right. And I always say this, you surround yourself with people that are positive in your direction you want to go. If you, get a, if you get around negativity, they will take your inspiration. Yeah, the, they're anchors, right? They're anchors. Are we losing you, John? Uh, the internet, eh? Yeah. Same with uh, Ron. But that was amazing, brother. Thank you for connecting us. Make sure you connect us with on the back channel, too. Like, let me uh, know the Instagram handle. What is this Instagram handle for other people? Uh, is uh, if you guys want to connect with John, his his he's on my IG. It's at New Day Associates. New Day. New Day Associates. New Day Associates. Okay, awesome, awesome. I appreciate that. Well, I need to run. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the inspiration. Uh, we'll kick this off. You know, we just got a huge leap forward just by meeting with him today. And exactly. <laughs> in who are in, in alignment, you know what I mean? Going in the same direction and wanting to do the same thing that will build this momentum of positivity. And, you know what I mean? You're going to be a big part of that. Cornell's going to be a part of that. Marv, you know what I mean? And so many people from around the world coming together you know it's a global village uh, i'm putting together a conference for young people it's called the just us conference right and telling people it's not us and them anymore there's no us and them it's just us and you know what are we going to do together to make this world a better place for our kids you know sometimes it's actually the kids who are coming up with the greatest ideas 
to, uh, you know what I mean, to make the world a better place. And so that's why we want to feature in the magazine something that young people like ages, you know, six to 12 are actually doing for their community, giving up their birthdays, collecting birthday, you know, money and giving it to the poor. And, you know what I mean? There's so many people like that who are, they've just got a different mindset. They're walking a different way. And so their stories need to be told, like definitely more than just on local news. You're right about that, brother. You're right about that, man. We definitely gonna make it happen, man. So no. definitely blessing doing this. People collect these stories, send them to me, curate them, right? And we'll connect with the right people. So definitely, man. So yeah, I just wanna say, man, thank you for doing this with me. It definitely was a pleasure. It was a blessing for those who are listening. Hope you guys got a lot of gems, a lot of notes out of this. Um brought some giants on stage. And that's what we do on a daily basis, guys. Not only on IG, not only on Clubhouse. But through our daily lives, man, we go ahead and we inspire everybody, man. So hopefully you guys love this segment. We, I'm trying to bring it back again with, with time. We'll set it up for another one because we got a lot of viewers so far. I mean, we have viewers today, man. We had at least about 20 people come in here and see us, man. So that's not bad for the first time. Right. It's all about connection. Exactly. So um, any last words for the people, Ty? I just say, you know what I mean? As, as John has said, go out, make someone else's day. You know what I mean? Go, don't worry about you, how your day is going. Go out and make someone's days better, and your day will get better. By Amen. Naturally. So we can do Amen. it. Amen. And remember, guys, don't call it a bad day. Call it a character building day. Words from the refresher. <laughs> All right, go. Last word. All right. Yes, sir. All right, my man. All right. Blessings. Go.